Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be looking on the Newgrounds website for some games to play. So, I found this cool game called We Become What We Behold, and I wanted to check it out. Looks really fun in the art style. Playing time, 5 minutes. Warning, the following program contains scenes of snobbery, rudeness, and mass murder. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay. Let's do this. Play. Oh, look, the mouse has a little finger. That's funny. Okay. We become what we behold. We shape our tools, and then our tools shape us. Marshall McLuhan. Point and click? Huh? Ooh, nice hat. What? Oh. What about these guys? Gross, go get a room. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Who's this guy? What the heck? You gotta catch him doing something interesting. <laughs> what? What about normal dudes? Just some normal peeps. A cricket? Can I click the cricket? Cricket! <laughs> NVM hats aren't cool anymore. Oh. Angry dude again. <laughs> you gotta catch him doing something interesting. Oh, that's telling me, I think. Me, this dude. Oh, am I not catching him? Do I have to catch him while he's screaming? Oh, I have to catch him while he's screaming, I think. Scream! Please scream! Yeah! Crazed square attacks! Yeah, you have to do it while he's- Oh, dude, he's scared now! Oh, no! There's square heads! <laughs> scared dude! You gotta also catch him- they a scared by what? I don't get it. Do I have to catch him? <laughs> what? Oh, they're scared of squares now, I think. This dude's terrified of squares. <laughs> Boom. Circle fears squares, yeah. <laughs> this dude's like, what? Okay. Interesting. This game's kinda cool. Like, yeah, yeah, things interesting going on. Bundles. <laughs> huh? Square snub circles. There's snub circles. Now, circles, are we gonna create a war? <laughs> what are these nerds doing now? Ah. Oh. Boring. Dang it, I probably should've come while he was screaming. There's an angry dude! Ooh! Happy squirrel! Who tunes in to watch people, like, get along? What? Maybe I should capture this red dude. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't get him in time. Ooh, just missed it. Dang it. I literally did just miss it. Crap. I have to, I have to get the red dude screaming. Boom. Circle hates squares. Oh no, we're creating a war! Now, now they're all mad! Square is hate circles. Okay, we're uh, ruining the world apparently. I want to capture someone. Dang it! I want to get a circle screaming at this dude, the haired dude. Everyone's just screaming. Somebody, scream next to this dude. Come in frame and scream next to him. Squares hate circles. Ah, oh, crap. Are they just gonna get more mad? What are these dudes? Peace is boring, violence goes viral. What? 
Oh, they're like peace protect protesters. Dang it, I keep missing it. I there was a shot there I could have had. Dang. I want them to scream at this dude. That yelling dude. Oh my gosh, I can't almost everyone hates everyone. Oh, okay. What's gonna start happening? Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah. Boom. Everyone hates everyone. Oh my gosh. Is anything gonna just start happening? Do I just have to keep capturing people screaming at each other? Everyone hates everyone. It, it's just gonna be the same, isn't it? Nobody's there. Okay. Ah, crap. Every story needs a conflict, so... Crap. Dang. What the? What the heck? Be scared. Be angry. What? No. What the heck? What is this game? What if I just capture something random? Oh, it's the same, okay. No! What the heck? What if I click the TV? Oh, it's the same, okay. <laughs> oh, it's TVception! Ooh, I'm gonna try something. The world is crumbling. Look, I'm gonna make TVception. Uh, there's a computer. Wait, there's a computer. Look. Oh no. There's a legit computer. What happened? Created by Nikki Case. Oh my gosh, many thanks to my playtesters. What the heck? And to my Patreon supporters. Oh my gosh! Uh. And last but not least, thank you for playing. Uh, you're welcome? You're very welcome. Okay. Huh? Can I click this dude's? What? Oh. We become what we behold. Buy me a coffee? Replay this mess, or see my other work. Let's see what else. Uh, no, because what if that will that take me to new grounds? Here, I'll click it and see what there is. Uh, okay. So I found this new game by them. Another game, not new, but another game by the same dude, person named The Evolution of Trust. It's called. So let's play. During World War I, peace broke out. It was Christmas 1914 on the Western Front. Desperate, I, de desperate strict orders not to chillax with the enemies. British and German soldiers left their trenches, crossed no man's land, and gathered to bury their dead, exchange gifts, and play a games. Meanwhile, it's 2017. The West has been at peace for decades, and wow, we suck at trust. Surveys show that over the past 40 years, fewer and fewer people say they trust each other. So here's our puzzle. Why even in peacetime do friends become enemies? And why even in wartime do enemies become friends? I think game theory can help explain our epidemic of distrust and how we can fix it. So to understand all this, let's play a game. Okay. This game is these games go deep. Okay. Wow. Let's do this. The game of trust. Uh you have one choice in front of you is a machine. Uh, if you put a coin in the machine, the other player gets three coins, and vice versa. You both can either choose to cooperate, put in a coin, or cheat. Don't put in a coin. You cheat, you cooperate, they cooperate, 
they cheat. So other player and me. Let's say the player, the other player cheats and doesn't put in a coin. What should you do? Wait, is it saying I cheat or cooperate? I think it's saying I don't. I have no clue. Uh. Okay, let's. I'm really bad at reading, by the way. So sorry if the long sentences get butchered by me. Let's say the other player cheats and doesn't put in a coin. What should you do? What happens if I click cooperate? They cheat. Minus one plus three zero zero. But let's say the other player cooperates and puts in a coin. What should you do now? Cooperate? Okay. Aw, oh, crap. Did I miss something up here? Aw, oh, crap. Sure seems like the uh, right thing to do, or is it? Because if you both cooperate, you both give up a coin to gain three. Score two plus uh, plus two versus plus two. But if you cheat, they cooperate. You gain three coins at the air, air cost of one. Score versus plus three versus minus one. Therefore, you should uh, still cheat. Gosh. And that's our dilemma. Trust is nice, but it can let others take advantage of you, or shoot you as you come unarmed out of a trench. Sometimes distrust is rational, but now what happens if we play the, this game more than once? Now let's play for real. You will be playing against five different opponents, each with their own game strategy. With each opponent, you will play anywhere between you will play anywhere between three to seven rounds. You won't uh, you won't know in advance when the uh, last round is. Can you trust them, or rather, can you tr they trust you? Pick your first real move. Choose wisely. Cooperate. Yay! We both got two coins. Opponent one plus one of five. Your total score two. Okay, next. Let's do it again. Yay! Total score four. So four. Let's do it again. Yay! We're all so happy. Cooperate. Yay! I'm scared, because they might turn or something. Oh! Opponent 2 has a top it. Ooh. Cooperate. Yay! Oh wait, did he cheat? Oh, he didn't put in a coin. Crap. Okay, then cheat. Oh, we both got zero. Cheat. Cheat. Yeah, I lost that round. Crap. Yeah, this guy's just a cheater. Cooperate. Yay! Yay, we're so happy! Total score 15. Okay. Ooh, yellow dude. Cooperate. Yay! Yay, I win! We both win, I guess, actually. Is one of them gonna, like, turn on me at the last second or something? I guess that's the whole point of this, you don't know. But so far, it seems good. The last one. Sherlock Holmes. Let's cooperate. Yay! Oh no, he cheated on me! Alright, I'll cheat on you, sucker! That's what you get! That's what you get for cheating on me! Here, I'll cooperate now. Okay, now we're happy. Cooperate? Okay, we're still good. Total score 35. Yay! Okay. And your total score is 39, which is pretty good. The lowest and highest possible scores are 7 and 49, respectively. So who are these strange characters you, sh you just played against? Copycat. Hello, I, I start with cooperate, and afterwards I just copy whatever you did in the last round. Meow. Okay. 
Always cheat. Ah, the strong shall eat the weak. Screw you, Top Hat Dude. Always cooperative. Let's be best friends. Yes. Grudger, listen, partner. I'll start cooperating and keep cooperating, but if y'all ever cheat me, I'll cheat you back till the end of tarnation. Oh, so if I cheated on him once, you would have cheated on me forever. Detective, first I analyze you. Ooh, I start cooperate, cheat, cooperate, cooperate. Okay, so I start cooperate, cheat. If you cheat back, I'll act like copycat. If you never cheat back, I'll act like always cheat to exploit you. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's really cool. Now, what if these characters were to play? What if these characters were to play against each other? Am I? Oh. It's tournament time. Each character will now play against every other character. That's ten paired matches and ten rounds per match. Who do you think will get the highest total score? Think carefully about it and then place your bets. Okay, who do you think will get the highest total score? Forget who's who. Hover over this to see descriptions of each character. Okay, so I have to see who will get the most coins. Oh, boy. Roger always cooperative? No, because then detective will take him in. Uh, always cheat now. Copycat? Grudger. Alright, you placed your bet on Grudger. Let's go through the matches one by one and see how the tournament plays out. First match. Minus one, and then three. Match one, copycat versus always cheat rounds. Okay, so because copycat copies him, he cheated on him, and then they both, and then he lost. Oh, by the way, next match. 19 and then 20. Match two, copycat versus always cooperative. They both got 20, but because he got minus one, yeah. You may be uh, skeptical about that Christmas truth story about the World War Act or one trenches, surely that was just a fluke. Okay. 39, uh-oh. Match 3, copycat versus grudger. Rounds, total scores. Yes, the truce was dramatic, but it was neither unique or ne nor unusual. Ah, oh, I should have gone with blue dude, no! Not every trench joined in peace, but it was pretty widespread. Many front lines came up with the idea independently, and and despite specific strict orders not to. Oh! Oh, cheater dude took advantage of nice person. Okay. And in fact, even before Christmas, several front line curtains already had established an official secret peace. Oh. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't have placed my bets on yellow. I should have placed them on detective, maybe. No, way. what am I thinking? He has the most points. They called it the live and let live system. Basically, you don't shoot um, I don't shoot you. And this worked in a lot of places. Oh, this dude's catching up. You may still be skeptical. Most soldiers don't spontaneously form peace with the enemy. What's so special about trench warfare? Uh, okay. They're all pretty high, except Detective Dude. Well, here's what's unique about the trenches. Unlike almost every other form of war, you'd have uh, to face the, the same specific soldiers every day. Oh! Oh gosh! You still got a lot. It's a repeating game, and that makes all the difference. Okay, everyone's going pretty high, actually. Anyway, and the winner is... Drumroll, please. Blue dude. Copycat, apologize to your bet grudger. Copycat goes by many e names. The Golden Rule. Reciprocal uh, altruism. Uh, live and let live. That's why peace could emerge in the trenches of World World War One. When you're forced to play the same game with the same specific people, 
not just the same generic enemy over and over again. Copycat doesn't just win the battle, it, it wins the war. But if things change a lot when you play multiple rounds of the same game, what if we play multiple tournaments? Now let us uh, let our population of players evolve over time. It's a three-step dance. One, play a tournament. Let them all play against each other and tally up their scores. Two, eliminate losers. Get rid of the five worst players if there's a tie, pick randomly between them. Three, reproduce winners. Clone the five best players if there's a tie, pick randomly between them. And repeat for as long as you'd like. Note, you don't have to wait for people to literally die and reproduce for culture to evolve. And that's needed. It is that unsuccessful behavior go away and uh, successful behaviors are uh, imitated. So now, let's see this in action. I am butchering all the long sentences. Say we start with the following population of players, 15 always cooperative, 5 always cheat, and 5 copycats. We'll ignore Grudger and Detective for now. We're going to do the tournaments eliminate, reproduce, dance a dozen times or so. Let's make another bet. Who do you think will win in the first tournament? Place your bets. Copycat. Because he won last one. Makes sense, Copycat won the tournament last time. Why not again? Let's see if you're correct. Ah, oh, crap, is he gonna lose? Uh. Oh no, the cheater looks like he got a lot of points. Eliminate bottom five. Oh, okay. Three, reproduce top five. Oh no, there's a lot of cheats now. Alas, Copycat did not win, but at least they didn't do as bad as Always Cooperate. They got eaten up by Always Cheat, whose numbers have now increased by five, but let's try a few more rounds of this. Play tournament two. To eliminate bomb. Uh, uh-oh. Oh, the more cheats there are, the less they get. I get it. Reproduce top five. Okay. The more cheats there are, the less cheats the less they'll earn always cheat is still growing at expense of always cooperate see now they have the same amount ah oh, sorry always cooperate you are my favorite with some of my favorites reproduce and now the blues will start winning and now all the always cooperate are dead but wait yeah see because there's more cheats they start earning less Yes, reproduce. Heck yeah! That's right, the always cheats become a victim of their own success. They exploited the naive, always cooperative, but once they ran out of them, they had to face the copycats who are nice, but not naive. Yes, eliminate top five. Reproduce. By simply copying the other or player's moves, copycats can play nice with each other while always cheats just cheat themselves. Not only that, but it also means copycat can give always cheat a taste of their own medicine. So did I- was I right? And so, as a result, Copycat inherits the earth. So in the long run, you were right. Copycat wins. Always cheat it may have won in the short run, but its exploitiveness was its downfall. This reminds me of a quote. We are punished by our sins for them, Albert Hubbard. Did I say that right? Oh, and by the way, the result is similar if we put Grudger and Detective back in. Start evolution process. Oh, Grudger's like, stay for a while. Stop the evolution process. No, sometimes a few Grudgers may stick around because when all players except Grudger and Copycat are eliminated, the two tie. So it seems the match of game theory is telling us something that Copycat's philosophy do unto, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Maybe not just a moral truth, but also a mathematical truth, however. Can I stop it? So is Blue gonna start coming back? 
Wait, is yellow gonna win? Or is blue gonna start growing again? Yellow started growing. Yeah, it's like an infinite loop. They're copycats and grudgers. Okay. Cool. There's a problem. Look around. The world's full of total jerkwads. If copycat is the strategy in this repeated game of trust, that's so pow- uh, that's so powerful that even soldiers in World War One trenches independently evolved a similar strategy called live and let live. Why then are there so many untrusted, untrustworthy people that's causing our epidemic of untrust? A clue's a clue's in that sentence itself in this repeated game of trust. So far we've only talked about change in the players. What about change in the game? What could lead to, that could lead what could lead to the evolution of distrust. What? Uh, before everything goes to heck, let's start with something nice. Here's a world filled entirely with always cooperative, except for w one always cheat and one copycat. Use the bottoms on the, r the right to start the sim. Go through to step or reset it. Step by step or reset it. Uh... Yeah, nice got taken immediately. Blues always win. As you already know, copycat wins handily in the long run under our current rules. But that's under the current rules, which say that players against each other for 10 rounds per match. Does copycat still win at 7 rounds, 5 rounds, 2, 3, 1? Change the number of rounds which the slider below start the sim. When start the sim and see what happens. Feel free to experiment. Let's go! Let's go 20 rounds and see what happens. Same thing, okay. Once you're done playing around, click continue. Play one round. One! Oh gosh, they lost immediately. Let's go up to two. Let's see the lowest that blues can win. Oh, uh, looks like two. Nope. Three? Nope. Oh gosh. Get destroyed. Four? Please don't lose, copycats. Dang it. They go out really fast. Five rounds. Nope. Six. Oh, blues went at six, okay. Okay, stop. Continue. As you saw, if you don't play enough rounds here, five or less, always cheat dominates. In 1985, when Americans were asked how many close friends they had, the most common answer was three. In 2004, the most common answer was zero. We now have fewer friends across class, racial, economic, and political lines because we have fewer friends, period. And as you just discovered for yourself, the fewer repeat interactions there are, the more distrust will spread. No mass media doesn't count. It must be two-way interactions between specific individuals. Oh, it gets worse. There's another way to breed distrust. Here are the payoffs for the trust game. Okay. Which the with the normal payoffs, copycat wins. But now change the bottom cooperative reward for plus two to plus one. Then click start. Even though plus one is still more than the punishment for both cheating, what happens? Okay. Here, let's go step. Uh. Okay, they still win. And they may end up eliminating each other, okay. Okay. Simulating 10 rounds, rounds per match. Continue. The same thing happens with a lower win-win reward.
Discord, Always Cheat Takes Over, Game Theory has two powerful ideas about this. Zero Sum Game, this is the sadly common belief that a game for us must come at a uh, loss to them, and vice versa. Non-Zero Sum Game, this is when people make the hard effort to create a win-win solution, or at least avoid a lose-lose. Without the non-Zero Sum Game, trust cannot evolve. Speaking of which, let's now look at our third and final barrier to the evolution of trust. Mistake- Mistakes? Mistakes? You misspelled- that's funny. As uh, cool as Copycat is, it has a huge fatal weakness I haven't mentioned. Yet to understand the problem, let's say two Copycats are playing against each other. Being nice players, both their first move will be... Okay. And normally they just pay back each other's kindness and sing kumbaya until the end of time. But what if while trying to res res reciprocate goodness? Huh? Oh no, mistakes, miscommunication, misinterpretations, accidents happen all the time in her life. But if the other person doesn't think it was an accident... <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Times two! The other player, being copycat, had no- had to re- retaliate. And you, being a copycat as well, will also have to retaliate. Oh no! <laughs> Deal with the mistakes. Thus, like the- Hat the Yields and uh, the McCoys, these two copycats will spiral into an endless cycle of vengeance and that started over a single mistake long ago. Tragic, but now are th there are other types of players who can deal with the mistakes. Ooh, new players! Let's meet some new faces, or new hats anyway. Copy Kitten! Hello, I'm like Copy Cat, except. I cheat back only after you cheat me twice in a row. After all, the first one could be a mistake, per Simpleton. Hi, I try to start cooperative. If cooperate back, I do something as last move as a last move. Even if it mistake if it mistake. If you cheat back, I do opposite thing as last move. Even if it mistake. Very random. Monkey robot, ninja, pizza, tacos, lol, I'm so random. Just play cheat or cooperative randomly with a 50-50 chance. Alright, let's see how we'll, will these peeps do when they play in a tournament. Okay. Let's start with a dozen always cooperative versus our old winner, the fair copycat, and are these new characters the forgiving copy kitten, the dull simpleton, and the silly random. In each round of a match, players have a small chance of making a mistake, let's say 5%. Who do you think will come out on top? Think carefully when place your bets. Ah, crap. Uh... I'm gonna go with random. Alright, you bet random. Win in random wins. Let's find out. Use the controls to your left to start the simulation in quick mode. We'll go through it step by step. Start. Okay. Oh no, dang it, random. The green one. Alright, you bet random wins. Let's find out. Use control. Oh. Your bet was close, but no cigar. Simpleton wins this because Simpleton is actually capable of exploiting always cooperative. They both start cooperative, but if Simpleton makes a mistake and cheats, since always cooperative never retaliates, it'll keep cheating them. Okay, now let's try. The same thing as before, except instead of half always cooperating, it's always cheat. It it's much less forgiving, more hostile environment. Who do you think will, will win now? Think, then place your bets. Hmm. I don't think these two will win. Maybe, maybe they will. Should I try Simpleton again? Should I try Simpleton? I'll try Simpleton. I, I really don't- I don't care if I lose that much. Man, Simpleton again. Go through the simulation. Please don't lose. 
Please. There's one. Dang it, and I lost. <laughs> Good guess, but someone else took the prize. Copy Kitten wins this time. That's surprisingly that... That's surprising that with an even meaner starting population, Copy Kitten, a more forgiving version of Copycat, was the most successful. Note, Copy Kitten is so forgiving it doesn't even entirely wipe out Copycat. It shares room. Yeah, there's some Copycats left. In this case, a bit of miscommunication, 5% chance of mistake each round could lead to more forgiveness. But is this true for all levels of communication? Use the slider to blow to change the amount of communication. When hit starts at least at 5%, Copy Kitten wins. That happens at 0% or 20% or 50%. What happens? I mean, it only goes up to 50 because at that point everyone moves as a coin flip. Everyone is a coin flip. During each round, there's a 5% chance a player makes a mistake. Let's go up to 50! Does it never end? Wait, do copy- Oh, copy kittens died. Is it cause it's random? Okay, stop. Um, I won't play around with this as much. Let's go 20. Oh, cheats one immediately. Uh, what was that? Oh, this is the amount of mis of commu miscommunication. Ten percent. Zero percent. That. Okay. We'll just continue. The result turns out something like the this. At zero percent, the fair copycat wins. At least one to nine percent. One to percent to nine percent. The forgiving copy kitten wins. At least 10% to 49%, the unfair forgiving always cheat wins. At 50%, nobody wins. Ever. This is why miscommunication is such an interesting barrier to trust. A little bit of its lead leads to forgiveness, but too much and it leads to widespread distrust. I think our modern media technology has much as it as much as it's helped us increase communication, has increased our miscommunication much more. At last, let's experiment with all the numbers, the knobs and sliders. Let's play. In the sandbox mode. Population payoffs rules. Oh! Note, sandbox mode is, is totally optional. Feel free to skip it or play around once you're done. It's Let's recap. This is cool! It's free, by the way. You can just go to... If you go to Steam, play the game I played earlier. At the end, click more games, and then the evolution of trust is in. You can play around with this if you want. Go play around with the sandbox mode. That sounds fun. I'm not gonna, because I wanna get to the end. What we learned today. That's cool. Game theory has shown us the three things we need for evolution of trust. Repeat interactions. Trust keeps a relationship going, but we need... But you need the knowledge of a possible future repeat interactions before trust can evolve. Possible win-wins. You must be playing a non-zero-sum game, a game where at least it's possible that both players can be better off a win-win. Lo 3. Low miscommunication. If the level of miscommunication is too high, trust breaks down. But when there's a little bit of miscommunication, it pays to be more forgiving. Of course, real-world trust is affected by the much more than this. There's reputation, shared values, contracts, cultural markers, blah blah blah, and let's not forget the biggest lesson. If there's one... If there's one big takeaway from all the game theory, it's that is what the game is defines that the player do our problems today isn't just that people are losing trust; it's that our environment acts against the evolution of trust. What that s may seem cynical or naive, what we're merely products of our environment, but as game theory reminds us, we are each other's environment. In this sort or in the short run of the game defines the player, but in the long run it's us players who define the game.
So do what you can to to create the conditions necessary to evolve trust. Build relationships. Find win-wins. Communicate clearly. Maybe then we can stop firing at each other, get out of our own trenches, cross no man's land to come together. And all learn, and all learn, to live and let live. A Christmas truce between opposite trenches, illustrated by A.C. A. Michael. Ill, published in the Illustrated London News, January 9th, 1915. Okay. Created by Nikki Case. That was cool! Okay, so I'm gonna leave this- here, I'm gonna turn the music off so I can do the outro. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here. You guys can go check out more of their games. I, I might play more of these games, actually. I went down a big rabbit hole here, but that was really fun. You can check out the sandbox mode if you want. Anyway, that first game was messed up, though. <laughs> these are very deep games. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, um, like the video. Um, subscribe so you can see if I play more of this, these types of games. And ring the notification bell icon so you actually see. I am all jumbled up today, all that reading. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and goodbye.